see. There we go. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. And build a database, feed it every day, communicate with your database in a systematic way, <clears throat> service all the leads that come your way. So we have two main focus. One is to build our database, to build relationships, to communicate with everybody in our database in a systematic way in order to create opportunities to provide service and opportunities to grow your business. The other main focus every day is to put opportunity into our pipeline. Now, we start with three main sources of lead generation. Repeat and referral business, prospecting and marketing. Prospecting includes <clears throat> calling for sell by owners, call on expired listings, circle prospecting around a property that was just sold or just listed. Circle prospecting can be done either by phone or by knocking on doors. Uh, and also networking for a group or in our neighborhood or in line of Publix. Our goal in our daily prospecting is to add at least one new met to our database every single day. Our goal is also to look for opportunity, someone who is thinking of selling their home, whether it's next week, a month from now, or a year from now, doesn't matter because we're looking for opportunity, period. Not opportunity, not just opportunity right now. Now, in doing that, we're going to be face to face with 250 people over a 12 month period. Everybody on Zoom, hang tight one minute. I'm moving the screen so everybody in the room can see it as well. Got to have a win win here. Everybody has to win. Can everybody in the room see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Nod your head, do something. And I know you guys can on Zoom because I'm looking at the same screen you are. All right, so we're adding 250 people to our pipeline. That's 250 people who could potentially hire you. Everybody clear on that? You're also adding 250 new Mets to your database in order to build a relationship, create top of mind using an eight by eight marketing plan so that in eight weeks from now, when they think about real estate, they think about you. Eight touches in eight weeks, phone calls, emails, text messages, personal notes. Uh, you're gonna touch them eight times in eight weeks. And yes, I know guys, don't think that I woke up and, and I didn't realize that today is a new day. Yes, I realize that very much of what I'm sharing with you today, I shared with you yesterday. And I also shared with you last week. And for those of you who have been here long enough, I've shared with you five years ago. So yeah, I know it's Groundhog Day at Keller Williams Coral Springs. It always will be because until you internalize this, I'm going to keep talking about it. So eight weeks from now, Laura, Laura in the room, is going to call the new contact, the new Met that's in her database. And the conversation is going to include, by the way, if you were to buy a home or sell a home, would you possibly work with me? By the way, if you knew of somebody who was going to buy a home or sell a home, would you consider referring them to me? And then Cerise, what am I looking for? I'm looking for? Yes. Yes. And when they say yes, they graduate into our sphere of influence. So the goal here is to add 250 relationships. Keyword, write it down. 250 relationships into our database because we're building relationships. We're not selling. We're having conversations with people that are care 
call conversations, not sales call conversations. We're following a 36 touch smart plan in order to communicate with the 250 people that we've added. And those 36 touches include four phone calls, one per quarter. And you're following a Ford model of communication. Everybody tracking with me so far? All right, now I wanna have a deep dive, a little bit longer conversation on two subjects. John, yep. can you just uh, elaborate a little bit on the 36 touch? I know you've said it many times, but I'm just gonna make sure I know. I can. Yeah. So I'm going to deep dive into follow up. And I'm going to deep dive. I promise you, Laura and I did, or, or, or Trisha, Trisha and I didn't I call you the right name. Here we go again. Here we go again. Don't be surprised if I call you the wrong name. Just get over it. Don't get it. Just get over it. There's a lot of you and one of me. All right. Trisha, right? <laughs> Trisha and I did not plan this. I promise. We're going to deep dive into that 36 touch communication with your sphere of influence. How's that, Trisha? All right. First of all, let's talk about follow up. The goal of follow up, write it down, is to create emotional proximity. Emotional proximity simply means that when someone gets serious about buying a home, selling a home. By the way, this works everywhere. Buying a car, buying clothes. When you go shopping, how can I help you? I'm just looking. Cool. Now I've got a suit in my hand and I'm looking for somebody to get me into the dressing room. Who created emotional proximity? Who am I going to talk to in order to get a key to that dressing room? Not a big deal if I'm buying a $40 shirt from wherever. It is a big deal if I'm buying a $4,000 Zinnia suit from Nordstrom's and that salesperson is making commission on the sales, right? Bottom line is emotional proximity works everywhere. All right. So the goal of follow-up is to create emotional proximity. Follow-up needs to be systematic in order for it to work. So what is the system that you're using in order to create emotional proximity? Well, the system I want you to use is I want you to use command. That's your database. And I want you to use a 36 touch with scheduled phone calls based on the motivation of the buyer or the seller. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's say you meet somebody at an open house and they're going to buy a home in the next 60 days. They're not ready to look yet. Maybe they'll start, maybe they're going to buy a home in 90 days. They're not ready to look yet. And they tell you, stay in touch with me. I'm not going to start looking for maybe another 30 days. That would be an A buyer. And I want you to call them at least two to three times a week. I know it's a lot. But that's the strategy that you're going to follow in order to create emotional proximity with an A buyer. Because just because they told you they're not going to start looking at homes for 30 days doesn't mean that they're going to start looking at homes in 30 days. You could listen to them and believe them. It's not that they're lying, by the way. They really believe it at the time. And you could call them in 30 days. And Trisha, you can hear, oh, I'm already working with so-and-so. I thought you were going to wait 30 days. Eh, things changed. <laughs> True story. So you're going to call them two or three times a week. Now, if they're a B buyer, in other words, I have a home that I need to sell first. Yes, it's already listed. So you don't need to come talk to me about listing the house. But sure, I'd love to work with you. However, it 
I'm not going to start looking until my home sold. And besides, I don't want to move for another six months. Now, you're going to schedule calls in command to speak with that person at least once a week. You're still staying in contact in order to create emotional proximity because eventually they're going to get to that point where they get serious. And remember, people's motivation changes. So you want to be in touch with them when their motivation changes. You don't want to call them six weeks from now and hear, I already bought a house. You did? I didn't think you were going to move for six months. Eh, things changed. So I'm going to call at least once a week. Now, back to this. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. This is emotional proximity. I'm not ready yet. 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 I'm glad you called. Now, what do those follow-up calls sound like? So don't overcomplicate this. This is Trisha with Keller Williams Realty. Just calling to check in. How are you? And is there anything I can do for you today? That script works on every single call. Yeah, sure. Of course. This is Eileen with Keller Williams Realty. Just calling to follow up as promised and checking to see if there is anything I can do for you today. It's being pleasantly persistent. Now, here's the opposite of being pleasantly persistent. Hervé, it's John Dietz with Keller Williams Realty. You ready to buy a house? No? Okay. Next week. Hervé, you ready yet? <laughs> Next week. Hervé, you got to be ready now. Okay? <laughs> you guys get the difference? Why aren't you ready? You should be ready. The difference is one is pushy. One is pushy. The other one is just being pleasantly persistent. Eileen, it's John Dietz following up as promised. Is there anything I can do for you today? Now, you're going to tell me, John, I'm not ready yet. They don't feel bothered. You're thinking too much. So Eileen says they don't feel bothered. Doesn't matter if they do. Even if they're irritated. Let me talk to you about the kitchen, the conversation that goes on the in the kitchen after you called, right? <laughs> Diane and I are, are are a couple, and we're in the kitchen after you call. Yeah, you know, I'm live on Facebook. That's smart, John. <laughs> and I'm live on, and and you call, I answer. Hey, John, it's Eileen. Following up as promised. Is there anything I can do for you today? And I'm like, no, Eileen, everything's good. I told you at the open house, I wasn't going to be ready to start looking for another month. Call me in a month. No, no, no. Your response is, I understand. And if it's okay with you, you hear the apologetic tone in my voice. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to check in again with you weekly, just in case there's anything you need. You hear me? Now, my response is like, oh, all right, that's fine. Call me next week. <laughs> now, I hang up the phone. Diane says, honey, who's that? Oh, is that? I almost did it. Like, who's that? Damn Eileen again. This, this, this chick is so persistent. I'm serious. Now, the following week, we have the same conversation. You hear me? Hey, John, it's Eileen following up as promised. Is there anything I can do for you today? No, I'm good. You know, just give me a couple more weeks. Call me then. Sure, I understand. Talk to you next week. You hear me? Now, Diane says, honey, was that that Eileen chick again? Yeah, man. She, what a pain in the ass. It's that damn Eileen. She just keeps calling. She seems to disagree. Listen to me. Listen to me. You're not desperate. You're providing a service. Okay? You are providing a service. And... I promise you this works. I'm not teaching you anything that I didn't do. This is how I sold 12 to 15 homes every single month for more than 10 years. Got me? 100%. Now, listen, it's a month later. And 
Diane and I are having a conversation in the kitchen and I'm like, okay, we got to start looking. We're moving in 60 days. We need to get out and look at some homes. Uh, what do you think we should do? Diane says, call that damn Eileen. <laughs> you hear me? So yeah, we're frustrated. Yeah, you're a pain in the butt. But when we think of real estate, we think of you. By the way, if you were to hire a real estate agent, script, write it down. If you were to hire a real estate agent, do you want to hire a persistent, aggressive real estate agent? Or do you want to hire somebody who is laid back and not persistent? No, of course, persistent, yes. Isn't that what I'm being? Yes. Persistent. If there was a buyer who was interested in your home, now you're a seller. If there was a buyer that was interested in your home, you, wouldn't you want me to follow up with them the same way that I'm following up with you? You know, that real estate agent that you said you were going to hire if you ever listed your home, that was two months ago. In the last eight weeks, how many times has that agent called you? None. I've called you every week. How about if they say that? Let me call you when I'm ready. You don't need to call. Yeah, you know, it's my job to call you. It's not your job to call me. And you want somebody who's going to do their job. And I'm going to call you again next week. That's it. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Plug and play. Don't think too much. I'm giving you the plays, guys. Just run the plays. All right. 36 touch. I didn't forget about you, Tricia. It lives inside a command. There, you go to the command library and you look up all of the 36 touches that live inside of your platform. It's your platform. You own it because you are stakeholders in Keller Williams Realty International. Uh, take ownership of it. We spent a billion dollars to create this, okay? Uh, you can choose from 100 different 36 touch smart plans that live inside command, or you can create your own. You can edit the ones that are in there. What I would recommend everyone use is the neighborhood nurture monthly or bi-monthly smart plan as part of your drip campaign in order to communicate with the 200, 300, 400, 500 people that you have inside your database. That's going to send them an email with a link to a website that they can customize for their neighborhood. And what command will do for you is it will let you know when they open up that link. You'll also be able to see how often they're looking at your technology. You'll be able to see how many homes they're looking at. You'll be able to see which homes they like the most. It's smart technology that will predict when someone's about it ready to move. What it does today, what our technology does today is not what it's going to do a year from now, from two years from now, five years from now. If you listen enough, if you, if you, search the internet enough, you're going to find enough people who will tell you that command is garbage. Am I, am I telling the truth? Yes. I am telling you the truth. Here's what I want you to hear, guys. It'll never be worse than it is today. Meaning tomorrow it's going to be a little better. The next day it's going to be a little better. This is, this is being updated daily. For those of you who had a smartphone, a, an iPhone like this, if you had an iPhone in 2007, was it anything like the iPhone you have today? Say no. Is the one you have today much, 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 much better than the iPhone you had in 2007? Right. Does anybody ever re remember having a Garmin GPS that set up on your dashboard? Remember those? Yeah. Remember those? So true story, Garmin owned like 90% of the market share for uh, GPS devices, right? And they had meetings where they talked about how wonderful they were and they had all this market share and just life is amazing, right? And they ignored smartphone 
hitting the market. They didn't even think for a moment that this would replace that GPS that sits on your dash. Now, Garmin had the opportunity to be the app that lives inside of this. But because they weren't paying attention, they missed out on that opportunity. And Google Maps is the app that lives inside of your phone. Now, how much money, bless you, how much, bless you again, how much money could Garmin have made if they were the app living inside of every smartphone on the planet? And they missed the opportunity because they weren't paying attention. I'm going to say the same thing to all those people who are telling you that command is garbage. Don't buy it. It's not where we are today. It's the world we're creating for tomorrow. And when the real estate industry truly makes a shift to a platform driven industry, when Blockbuster goes out of business and everybody goes to Netflix, every broker out there that is turning their nose up at what Keller Williams is doing is gonna get Amazon. <laughs> You guys get this? Totally a bunny trail. Had nothing to do with what I was talking about today, but okay. Uh, Madeline, your hands up. Talk to me. Good morning. Good morning. Regarding the following up for investor, yeah. uh, what I should do? Uh, email, call, um, no smart plan uh, because investor is looking for an opportunity in the best place. Please yeah. tell me. Could be a smart plan still. Just what you don't want to do as a neighborhood nurture. But yes, it's a smart plan. No to neighborhood nurture. And to answer your question, should you call them? Should you text them? Should you email them? The answer is yes. All of the above. How often? Uh, as often as they will allow you to stay in touch so that uh, you're building a relationship. And you have to have just some intuition with this. Pay attention. Uh, you don't want to stalk, but at the same time, you don't want to not follow up enough. Uh, it would just depend on each individual is different. But I'm going to start with once a week. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay in touch with them once a week for at least eight weeks. All right, Madeline, at least eight weeks. And then after that, it depends. Brian, talk to me. Thank you. Yep. Hey, good morning, John. Um, really quick. So I'm thinking, right? So like there's the saying of like don't don't confuse movement with achievement. And I'm I'm thinking that with just expire calls, we get about 50 um, leads every single day. Mm -hmm. Now I, I was doing like some some stuff and, and I realized that five or more of those tend to be over a million dollars, right? Um, about 15 tend to be between 500 to a million. Then we can say about 20 are between 250 to 500. And then we can say that the final 10 are below 250, right? And I make the calls the 50 calls and every single day I speak with about from the 50 calls, let's say I average 10 conversations from those calls. Now from those 10 conversations, some people tell me that they're interested in selling. So I add about five of those to my database. Okay, and then I follow up forever. But with that said, I feel like I'm missing an opportunity to still reach out to those 50 people or the extra 45 on a consistent systemized way. So the question for you, and sorry, I went through all that to get to my question is, do we, do I just keep calling those five people only, or do I put a program in place that I send an email or text messages or send them flyers to their home or whatever it is to the other 45 systematically. All right, guys, I'm going to turn this around so you can see it after I'm done, but for now, I'm just going to talk to Brian. Brian, I turned you around so everybody in the room could see you, but you're looking at a flip chart right now, yes? Yes. 
All right. So I was listening to what you said. First of all, love your analytical thinking. I really do. I mean that. And I heard I'm making a call. I'm making phone calls to expired listings. I'm talking to an average of 10 a day. I'm working 250 days. You didn't say that. I said it for you, which means you're talking to 2,500 expired listings in a year. Cool. You're either going to add them to a pipeline to follow up with. That's going to be everybody who agrees to allow you to come out and see their home. So if I had an offer on your home, would you want me to bring you the offer? Yes. Cool. That's exactly why we should get together. I can come over today at two or would three be better? Three works. So now they're in your pipeline. John, or, John, 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 go ahead. Go question, go ahead. So in my pipeline, under your definition, only go the people who I actually meet face to face. Yeah, that's okay. correct. That's correct. Now you also have an opportunity. This is where I was going, where you just got there faster than me. <laughs> well, you could also add those people into your database as a new Matt. Anybody who says, no, I don't want to meet with you. However, you want to stay in touch with them because just because they say no to a face-to-face -face appointment today doesn't mean they're going to say no to a face-to-face -face appointment a month from now or six months from now or a year from now or three years from now. Now, are you going to add all 2,500 people to your database? No, you're not. And that's just going to be a decision you have to make based on the conversation that you had. In other words, Brian, if I call you and you say no, John, I mean, everything you're saying makes sense. And yeah, you know, I'd love for you to bring an offer, but my situation truly has changed. I am thought I was getting a new job in Atlanta. I'm not, at least for another year. So I'm staying put. I'm not moving for another year, but this was a great conversation. And you follow up with, you know, John, before I let you go, I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the market. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? And the person says, yes. Now you've got a percentage of this group. Let's just say it's 10%, which coincidentally would be 250. So you've added 250 of those contacts from those expired phone calls into your database. Quick question, John. Yeah. Why are you leaving the other 2,250 out? You can't put everybody in there. This can get so large that you're not communicating with them. Now, Kevin Morris would disagree with me. He would. He would say, put them all in there. Now, he has over 100,000 uh -huh. people in his database. Why? So why can't you put them all in there? Right? You could. You could. And, then, and then tag the people that are there just to be there? Like what? 100% correct. Has, Ryan, and then just not, send an email to everybody. Brian, I'm not being rude, but we can't do this all day long. You're 100% you're correct. You absolutely could do that. And I'm turning around to look at everybody in the room to say, he's right. You absolutely could do this. You could put all 2,500 of those into your database, put them on a smart plan, tag them so that you are checking in with them in six months or checking in with them in three months. It doesn't have to be an eight by eight. It doesn't have to be somebody that's going to eventually be a part of your sphere of influence. It's just somebody that you're touching periodically so that you can be there when they make a new decision. So Brian, you're absolutely right. I, if you're gonna do that, create tags for, see that? Okay, create tags for A seller, B seller, C seller. A is somebody who's not ready yet. They're not over here that I didn't meet with them. But based on the conversation we had, their motivation is more than likely going to change in the next 30 to 90 days. B seller is somebody who's more than likely going to change their motivation six months from now. And C, these people are out of their mind. I have no idea what they're going to do, but one day they might change their mind. 
<clears throat> you make sure you tag them so that you're checking in based on potential motivation. Got it, okay. Now this group over here, the group that you get in the door, these people you follow up with aggressively, tenaciously, and unconditionally. Never call me again. Cool, talk to you next week. If I ever hire a real estate agent, I'm hiring anybody but you. Cool, talk to you next week. You reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. People will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. I don't hear the word no. Got it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Brian, you think I'm nuts, don't you? <laughs> no, I, I actually follow you, like what you say to the team. He's a mini John. He's a little bit more, Diane said, you're, 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 you're my twin. Um, and yes and no, Brian's a little bit more analytical than I am. One of my best advantages is I don't think. <laughs> no, so John, John, hold on. I'm actually um, a, a driver and an analytical. When I'm like speaking with clients or when I have to make a decision, I'll, I'll make it quickly. Mm. But before... But before I say, yes, I'm going to jump into whatever it is and then follow it forever, I, I want to make sure I'm doing things right. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I would analyze it left and right. I hear you. And Brian, when I say I don't think what I mean by that, because clearly I, I, I know you do. Monica <laughs> totally agree with that. She says, John, you don't give yourself enough credit. Um, I master this. I think it is super high level. I am a strategic, hi Ryan, mm -hmm. I am a strategic player in the, in the game of real estate. I'm extremely strategic. I'm playing chess. I'm not playing checkers. I am always thinking at least two or three moves ahead. When you sat in a recruiting appointment with me, you saw that in the recruiting appointment. Eileen, the day we met, did you have any intention on joining our company that day? No. Did you join that day? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew you were the moment you sat down. I'm not saying that with ego. It's just, it, it, it's, it's a system, which means it's duplicatable. I can teach it. Make sense? All right. What I mean when I say I don't think is I don't. Coach told you to I, play. You I respond. Yeah. I respond, I read and respond. And when playing football, you don't have time to think. And I'm still a football player at heart. I'm looking at the center and I'm looking at the guard, I'm looking at the quarterback and I'm looking at the running back. All four of them are in my peripheral vision. I played middle linebacker in high school and college football. And the moment that ball is snapped, within a half a second, I have to react. I don't have time to think. I have to react and know he did this, he did this, he's doing this, he did this, I do this. Or I do this based on what everybody else does. Or I do this, I have to respond. That's what I mean when I say I don't think. Now, imagine that same football player going. <laughs> <laughs> the play's over and I'm still standing here. <laughs> Um, that guy's on the bench <laughs> and somebody else is coming into the game. You guys get it? Imagine Tom Brady taking a snap and just standing there and going, oh my God, everybody's moving around so much. I don't know what to do. <laughs> all right, you guys all think of that. <laughs> all right. Uh, one moment. All right, everybody. Uh, just shutting down the record. I'm not going away. <laughs> uh,